Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to share my end of the year TBR for 2020. These are the books that I really hope I'm able to read before the end of the year. I know it starts getting a little stressful as a booktuber at the end of the year. You're thinking of what books did I read that were the best? Which ones did I think were the worst of the year? And you're hoping to finish the year strong. At least that's what I'm hoping for. 2020 has been a crazy year, so I'm just hoping that all of the books that I managed to read at the end of the year blow my socks off and I haven't had a great reading month so far. I'm about midway through November and I've read two books and both of them have been like not that good. You'll have to stay tuned for my wrap up at the end of the month to find out which books I read. But let's go ahead and jump into my end of the year TBR. Now, since I haven't had a great strong reading month here at the end, I'm kind of having a little bit of a slower start in November. I want to go ahead and like keep my expectations low. So there's only seven books on this TBR and one I'm already reading. So off to a good start. Also, as a friend, I'm asking you that if you see me reading something other than these books, you need to reach out to me and make sure I am okay and that I am sticking to my TBR. And I would love to know which books you have on your end of the year TBR so we can keep each other on track. You know what I'm saying? So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the books that I hope to read by the end of the year. The first book is the one that I'm currently reading and that is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, and this is the Vintage Classics edition. I also have the Puffin and Bloom edition. I started this yesterday, and I am on page 120 of 400, and so far I really am enjoying it. This story takes place like over Christmas time, or at least starts around that time of year, and it's just about the four March sisters, and kind of their life and their story and sisterhood and family and it takes place like during the Civil War era so very interesting it's a classic for a reason and I'm hoping that if I had finished this I can finally watch the new remake of like the movie because I've been waiting to read this before watching that so yeah definitely want to do that this season. Next up, as you know, I read my first cozy mystery and I absolutely loved it. It was called The Plot is Murder by V.M. Burns. And I just loved the mystery and like the cozy vibes and the book within a book. And I want to continue in that series with Red Herring Hunt. This is the second one in the series. And this one um, just follows Samantha Washington. She's about to find out it's not so easy to play Monday morning quarterback when it comes to murder. In the town of North Harbor, Michigan, there's a quarterback. He's a local hero. And then you have Samantha Washington, owner of the Market Street Mysteries Bookstore. Wilson is more than a tenant. He's like an adopted son. But to the police, he is their prime suspect as his ex-girlfriend is found murdered. So yeah, so I'm really, really interested in this. And I hope we get to see Samantha's grandmother again and her friends because they were literally my favorite parts of the first book. And it does look like Samantha continues the story that she was writing in this book as well. So I'm excited about the book within a book aspect. I'm hoping to get to this one this month because I just think for this series, autumn is the perfect time to read it. Next up, take a hint, Danny Brown, the second book in the Brown Sisters series by Talia Hibbert. She is a black British author. She's one of my all-time favorite authors. I'm so excited for the third book that's coming out in 2021, but this is standing in between me and that book. So I need to read this one. I'm really, really excited about it. So we have Danica Brown and we have Zaf and it's a fake dating relationship romance. And I just really, really love those. So I'm really looking forward to this one. The next book that I would like to read, I had another book, but I like changed it out because I finished that book and I was like, I do definitely want to have like seven books on this TBR. So I added The Vanishing Half 
by Britt Bennett and this is another gorgeous book and I know it was like a book of the month pick but I actually had like pre-ordered this so really excited to have this um, it's twins inseparable as children ultimately choose to live different lives in different worlds one black and one white so I'm really really excited about this one I think it's going to tackle some really awesome themes such as race gender identity and the influence of your past on your like day-to-day -day life it takes place from the 1950s to the 1990s from the deep south to california and you just have two um different twins so one is passing as white and her white husband knows nothing of her past and then you have one that decides to return to the community that she ran away from when she was 16 years old so it's gonna be about like sisterhood and family and all of those other themes that I talked to you about but yeah I'm really looking forward to this one and I really hope I can get to it by the end of the year Okay, jumping into more like December plans, um, I am definitely going to be reading In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This is my book club's pick for a holiday story. And as you know, I'm a big fan of Christina Lauren. I've only like not liked one book, but everything else I've pretty much really liked. Um, I'm hoping I love this one. Of course, this takes place over Christmas time. And I think like a Christmas like family get together type thing. On the back, it says one Christmas wish, two brothers and a lifetime of hope are on the line. And I just love the Christmas vibes of the cover, even though like I wouldn't typically think this lime green would work, but it like totally does. As you know, Ruth Ware released her newest novel, One by One by Ruth Ware. And this one is a tech startup company, goes on a retreat in the French Alps, and there is an avalanche, and time is kind of running out for them to be rescued, and the group starts dwindling one by one. So it's kind of like, and then there were none, and it's told in multiple perspectives. And I just hope I love it. I have heard mixed things, but I mean, I don't know. It says thrills and chills. So that's what I'm in the mood for. And the last book on my official end of the year TBR is the newest one that I got from Book of the Month. This was one of my November picks. And this one is called This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins. And this is a romance story about two people both born on New Year's Day. And I guess this, the premise is, is that like if you're the first like child born on New Year's Day, you like get money, you get your picture in the paper and all of this. So these two moms are trying to be the first one to deliver their baby. And one of them is the first one and they kind of lead a life of luck. And the other one is the unlucky one. But over the course of like several years, it says right here, how many chances to meet your perfect match and how they're kind of like drawn back to each other. And it takes place kind of like near New Year's because they're born on New Year's and then there is New Year's Day and then there is a New Year's party where they run into each other and stuff like that. A moving joyful love story this time next year explores the way fate leads us to the people we least expect no matter what the odds. So yeah so I actually have like quite a few romance on this and I'm okay with it. But yeah, that wraps up my end of the year TBR. Check in with me. Make sure I'm reading these. Also, let me know what you're hoping to read by the end of the year. Trying to keep it manageable on my end because not having the best November, but that's okay. Anyway, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're all having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!